Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My dear sisters and brothers, Ya Ali Madat and Imamat Day Mubarak to you all. Today is an auspicious day for our Jamaat as we commemorate the 64th Imamat Day of our beloved Mawlana Hazar Imam. Imamat Day is a time that the global Jamaat use to reflect on the unique spiritual bond that we have with the Imam of the time. This bond is a source of strength which carries us through the journey of life. Imamat Day conventionally consists of collective in-person prayer and celebration. But like so many milestones over the past year, the majority of us are forced to mark this special day virtually. But I'm happy to be sharing in this moment with so many more of you than I would otherwise be. Maulana Hazrimam regularly reminds us that happiness is a blessing and that ours is a faith of happiness. So on behalf of the National Council, all the institutions and Muki Kamriya Saibans, I wish you and your families the blessing of happiness and pray that you share joy, laughter, and smiles with each other today and every day. This year, more than ever, we have been reliant on our Imam and our Jamaat as our support systems as we have navigated the uncertainty that the pandemic has thrown at us. The range and complexity of emotions and experiences have been unimaginable. I know there are people amongst us who have suffered immense loss, anxiety, and instability, but also incredible support, love, and togetherness as we have unified as one Jamaat in the face of this global challenge. It has been humbling to watch the teamwork, sacrifice, and love that have driven the fantastic work of our volunteers, both within our Jamaat as well as in the communities in which we live. On this Imamat Day, I would like to take the opportunity to share with members of the Jamaat the key areas of work the National Council is focusing on. In his guidance to leadership, Maulana Hazrimam provided a number of key priorities that are critical for the long-term happiness and success of our Jamaat. And our focus for the Council is wholly underpinned by this guidance. Upon taking office, the National Council set out to establish a vision statement that would serve as a guiding force for all the work that we do. And it reads as follows. A Jamaat with faith and ethics, united and stable, that can uplift humankind today and for generations to come. As institutions, we have put in place structures and programs that serve to respond directly to those priorities. However, in all our efforts, we need the full and wholehearted engagement and support of the entire Jamaat to be able to deliver on Maulana Hazrimam's wishes. We should also remember that these are long-term generational objectives that we hope will sow the seed for the future success of our Jamaat in our ever-evolving society. As we all know, our Imam is dedicated to ensuring that all his murids enjoy a good quality of life, such that they are best placed to be able to succeed and give back to society. The saddening reality, however, is that we have sisters and brothers in our Jamaat 
who live in poverty. This is something that I know none of us will be content with, and one that the Imam is immensely concerned with. Our response to Maulana Hazri Imam's objective of poverty elimination has been the launch of the Brighter Horizons program. We have been humbled by the early engagement of the Jamaat with this initiative, which speaks to the deep desire in our Jamaat to live according to the ethics of brotherhood and ensure the success of the Jamaat as a whole by contributing time, knowledge, and resource, as well as creating an environment where we are all safe to speak up and ask for help. The second key area of work revolves around the notion of pluralism, a term that is familiar to all of us, one that Maulana Hazri Imam has referred to on countless occasions, and one that speaks to the very essence of our faith, that we come from a single soul. It is therefore our responsibility to contribute to the communities in which we live and embody the Imam's philosophy of serving civil society. The wider world and the societies in which we live have started to speak loudly on topics like diversity and inclusion, almost as though the pandemic has given us a revitalized sense of perspective that we had lost sight of before. This past year, like no other, has reminded us of the fragility of the human race and the need for all of us, no matter our age, to take care of our health. Critically, however, this is not limited to our physical health, because equally important is the need to be aware and respectful of mental health, our third focus area. Across the globe, we have seen people, irrespective of background, suffering from issues such as anxiety, depression, loneliness, and more. Our Imam is very aware and focused on addressing issues of mental health within the Jamaat. We should, as a Jamaat, never be afraid to seek support, be respectful and aware of such issues, and offer a hand of brotherhood to anyone who is suffering. Lastly, we come to early childhood development. Many of the issues that we face today in relation to our quality of life can be addressed in a systemic way through effective early childhood education and development as a preemptive measure that ensures healthy foundations in the early stages of life. So it is with these four objectives front of mind that we are conducting our work in the institutions. And I know that many of you have been involved in delivering on these priorities. To you, I extend my most sincere gratitude. As I said earlier, however, the work that we are doing today requires the entire Jamaat to embrace these priorities and help us on delivering on Maulana Hazimam's wishes. Before I close, I would like to say a few words on the COVID pandemic. As you know, the UK government has indicated that the 19th of July could mark the end of restrictions around social distancing, the mandatory wearing of face coverings, and more. From a policy standpoint, we are seeing a shift towards an approach 
that encourages individuals and organizations to demonstrate their own sense of responsibility to mitigate risk and be prudent. So it is in this spirit that we will continue to maintain a degree of restrictions in our gatherings, including in our Jamaat Khanas, so as to keep the Jamaat safe. For the foreseeable future, we intend to uphold our current restrictions, especially whilst the case numbers are high and there is a portion of the population that is not fully vaccinated. We would encourage those in the Jamaat who have not taken up the opportunity to get vaccinated or not received their second dose to strongly consider doing so. Finally, I would like to close by offering our humble shukrana to Maulana Hazar Imam for his guidance, blessings, and baraka, and pray for the health and happiness of Maulana Hazar Imam and his family. Once again, Imamat Day Mubarak. May we all feel the love of the Imam in our hearts, his hand on our shoulders, and his guidance in our minds as we continue to navigate the journey of life and the inevitable challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. May we all seek comfort in the fact that even in times of darkness, our faith, the love of our Imam, and the support of our spiritual sisters and brothers are constant reminders that we are never alone. Thank you. Yali Madat.